हेलो ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग फॉर दैट कोर्स सो कैन यू हेयर मी गाइस ओके सो सो लेट मी स्टार्ट विद दैट डेटा ग्राम कोर्स सो सो आई हैव प्रीवियसली डन दीज टू कोर्सेज यू कैन सी हेयर इंट्रोडक्शन टू पाइथन इंटरमीडिएट पाइथन एंड नाउ आई एम ऑन द थर्ड फेज ऑफ द कोर्ट डेटा ग्राम कोर्स विच इज डेटा मैनुपलेशन विद पांडाज ओके सो आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट दिस कोर्स टूडे so i am making uh, to solve the i'm trying to solve the questions what is what we have in that course and after that we can uh, have done or i have also done an practice project which is available in that uh, course which is that i can show you uh yes in a second which is the which is the tv data analytics uh, project so i have done that one also if you guys want i can share that um, project with you all so that is the project so let me open it so you know, jupiter okay so if you want to uh, so we can also go this in the upcoming next video and we can try to see how to to uh, analyze the tv data thing that i have done so that is very interesting project so i can tell you brief about that uh, that analysis thing just give me a second so here it is so see uh, that is the pro that is the tv data analytics project that i have done through data cam so in that project we are analyzing the data of that super bowl uh, game which is and you know the super bowl is like uh, ipl in india it is an league which is happening in in the us state so it is that data so i have tried to analyze that data so i have done that thing previously so i can share that video with you later so first so let us start with the data gram course that what we are going to do today okay so okay so that is the data manipulation with panda course so let me start it first so so in that particular data manipulation in panda code what we are covering introduction to data frame inspection of data frame parts of data frame sorting and subsetting of uh, columns and other things so each and everything you guys can see there so these are the topics we are going to cover in the first transformation data so in the next video we are going to aggregate second part of the that is aggregation of data and after that slicing indexing and creating a visualization data frame okay so so i am trying to make a video on every sunday okay so if you guys uh, want you can join me every sunday at the same time 12 to 1 in between okay so let me start with the first part of it okay so so that is the introduction video so let me play that first so let's see what we have in that video okay so so let's play it and see hi i'm richie i'll be your tour guide through the world of pandas pandas is a python package for data so manipulation it can hi, also be used I'm for richie. data visualization I'll be your tour guide we'll get to that in chapter 4 we'll start by talking about data frame which form the core of pandas. In chapter 2, we'll discuss aggregating data to gather insights. In chapter 3, you'll learn all about slicing and indexing to subset data frames. Finally, you'll visualize your data 
deal with missing data and read data into a data frame. Let's dive in. Pandas is built on top of two essential Python packages, NumPy and matplotlib. NumPy provides multi-dimensional array objects for easy data manipulation that Pandas uses to store data. And matplotlib has powerful data visualization capabilities that Pandas takes advantage of. Pandas has millions of users, with PyPy recording about 14 million downloads in December 2019. This represents almost the entire Python data science community. There are several ways to store data for analysis, but rectangular data, sometimes called tabular data, is the most common form. In this example with dogs, each observation, or each dog, is a row, and each variable, or each dog property, is a column. Pandas is designed to work with rectangular data, like this. In Pandas, rectangular data is represented as a data frame object. Each programming language used for data analysis has something similar to this. R also has data frames, while SQL has database tables. Every value within a column has the same data type, either text or numeric, but different columns can contain different data types. When you first receive a new data set, you want to quickly explore it and get a sense of its contents. Pandas has several methods for this. The first is head, which returns the first few rows of the data frame. We only had seven rows to begin with, so it's not super exciting, but this becomes very useful if you have many rows. The info method displays the names of columns, the data types they contain, and whether they have any missing values. A data frame's shape attribute contains a tuple that holds the number of rows, followed by the number of columns. Since this is an attribute instead of a method, you write it without parentheses. The describe method computes some summary statistics for numerical columns like mean and median. Count is the number of non-missing values in each column. Describe is good for a quick overview of numeric variables, but if you want more control, you'll see how to perform more specific calculations later in the course. Data frames consist of three different components, accessible using attributes. The values attribute, as you might expect, contains the data values in a two-dimensional NumPy array. The other two components of a data frame are labels for columns and rows. The columns attribute contains column names, and the index attribute contains row numbers or row names. Be careful, since row labels are stored in .index, not in .rows. Notice that these are index objects which we'll cover in chapter three. This allows for flexibility in labels. For example, the dog's data uses row numbers, but row names are also possible. Python has a semi-official philosophy on how to write good code called the Zen of Python. One suggestion is that given a programming problem, there should only be one obvious solution. As you go through this course, Bear in mind that Pandas deliberately doesn't follow this philosophy. Instead, there are often multiple ways to solve a problem, leaving you to choose the best. In this respect, Pandas is like a Swiss army knife, giving you a variety of tools, making it incredibly powerful, but more difficult to learn. In this course, we aim for a more streamlined approach to Pandas, only covering the most important ways of doing things. Enough okay. meditating. Time to write some code. So, so I think uh, you guys can understand what are the things that we are cover covering in this video. So the first thing that he tells us about the what are we are covering and in that particular session so first video is about the the head uh, he told us about the head 
info shape and describe so these are the three main uh, three to four main uh, you know uh, functions from by using these we can uh, uh, see that uh, we can see that how what is in the data and uh, what because you know the data is pretty much large if we uh, do our daily data analysis thing on a daily basis in our offices so the data is pretty much large so it is not easy to go each and every row each and every time okay so for do to for just the in to inspect what is in that data frame so what kind of data it has so we use these functions here that is the head info shape and describe so one by one i am going to uh, show you in that uh, script by and then we can also run uh, along with that and we can see uh, what are the um, things that are uh, uh, what the output that we are getting from these so first let me read it first when you get a data frame to your work with the first thing you need to okay so let me see so first function is head so what head is doing return the first few rows of the data of the data frame okay so let's start with the code let's get your hands dirty so first is print the head of the homeless data okay let's see so let me use the so it is already written there that print homeless homeless is the name of the data frame that we have okay and the head function is used to see the few rows what we have top few rows okay and print means print okay so let's run this first okay so here we can see by using this code we so that is in the data that region states individuals family members and state pops pop means population here okay so th these are the things that are available in the data we have and the second query that we can also run is print homeless dot info let's see what comes out when we use that uh, query as well okay so uh, okay so here it is when we uh, use the second second query uh, there the info method it is showing us the not null values in that particular data frame if if it has any uh, null value so it will show you here that out of 51 47 minus 51 so that means four are the null values in that particular row in the table okay so that is the thing so you can get it from there uh, or, or it is also showing us what kind of variable it uh, uh, it is uh, i mean the data type it is the object you can see the region is the object states are the object and individual are float 64 so float you can see it is in it is in point so it is in float okay so like that it is showing all of the details of that particular data from each and every column so what we have in that okay let's see the third thing so the third query is the shape okay let me start to shape print homeless dot shape let's see so i think she, yeah so the shape function here it is showing us the how many rows and column we have in that particular data frame so here when i run that query it is showing me that it has 51 uh, rows and five columns okay okay so that is what the shape function is doing here so let's see the another one that is the describe function so let me use print homeless dot describe function and see what the outcome comes when i run that query too so okay so uh, okay so here is the output we have so when we run that describe uh, function along with our data frame so it is showing us that uh, that this summary of what we have in that uh, particular data frame you can see number of count okay uh, mean value standard deviation std means standard deviation 
ओके मिनिमम वैल्यू मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ इट सो यू इफ यू कैन सी देयर दैट थिंग दैट फाइव थिंग इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एंड फाइव पॉइंट समरी यू कैन इट मीन्स दैट आई कैन शो यू इफ यू एवर सी जस्ट यू मिस कैन शो यू फाइव पॉइंट समरी ओके सो फाइव पॉइंट समरी so so if you ever heard about the box plot in the box plot we have that five point summary uh, and that particular uh, describe thing the minimum uh, to max these are the five thing it is showing us the five point summary of the box plot if you ever heard about the box plot box plot is something looks like this box plot okay so yeah so that is the box plot ओके सो सी यू कैन सी द मिनिमम वैल्यू क्वार्टर वन क्वार्टर टू मीडियम मैक्सिमम सो दैट इज कॉल्ड द फाइव पॉइंट समरी एंड वी कैन यूज इट इन द बॉक्स प्लॉट यू वाइज हैव आल्सो सीन दैट बॉक्स प्लॉट थिंग इन द स्टॉक मार्केट एनालिसिस व्हेन यू इफ यू हैव डन प्रीवियसली बिफोर सो व्हेन यू वेन यू सी द स्टॉक मार्केट यू सी द ग्राफ इट इज फॉर्म द टू टाइप्स ऑफ ग्राफ first is the line chart and that is the and second one is the candle graph so candle graph is basically the uh, the graph made by box plot okay so let me i can show you also uh, we can go to any website and you can see uh, is not available so you can see that by your own okay so it is a mix of the box plot that you can see in the uh, box plot some okay so it is done here then we can go further so let's submit it and let's see okay okay so he wants to on the head okay so let me remove this and let me go to the next step let's submit answer okay so the first thing is submitted now we are on the second part of the video it is showing us the info method showing the information of each of the following columns such as data type and the number of missing we have already done that in the first video so let me first run it for you so you guys can see what we are getting from this okay so here is what we are getting so that is the info method is showing us the all the values and all the uh, how many rows we have and object and type of that data particularly okay let me submit it okay so in the third step it is showing us the shape function so shape as we all know it is showing us the rows and the column how many rows and how many columns we have in that particular uh, data type okay let me submit it again and now it is showing us the describe function as we have we have already seen that describe function means the all the things that we have in the data like count mean median uh, standard deviation minimum value maximum value and five points of i also told you about that okay let me submit it again so yeah so we are done with the art first part so in that we have seen that the head info and shape description so these are one of the most useful and uh, very commonly used data inspection techniques that we can use to analyze our data okay so let's go one step further now and see what we have for now okay now we are on the second part of the uh, video so here we have parts of the data frame okay to better understand the data frame object is useful to know that they consist of three components stored as attributes okay okay so is in that case it is showing okay that our data frame is consist of three component that is components are stored as attributes okay so first thing is the values column then index okay so value are a two dimensional numpy array of 
of values okay and column are an index of column the column names okay and index is an index for the row either row number or row name okay you can usually think all indexes you can also see or think of the indexes list of string as number through the pandas index okay data type allows for more sophisticated option these will be covered in the later course okay home this is available okay so so first thing is that whenever you want to uh, use the pandas library to analyze the data you have to import you have to import it like this so you have to type import pandas as pd so by using this statement you are able to access the pandas data frame and as pd means it is an allies part so you don't have to write every time pandas pandas in your when you are using the uh, pandas pandas functions okay so first is we can see print the values of the homeless okay so let first let me make it comment so that we can run each and every query separately and see what we have okay so first thing is let's print the values so whenever you are uh, printing any data frame values it is show you the data in the form of two dimensional numpy uh, uh, so i i think you guys know about the two dimensional thing two dimensional means that two array in between the arrays okay so let me run this and you can understand that easily so here you can see so that is the two dimensional array two dimensional how it is two dimensional you see there are curly bracket one and then it has another curly bracket in between it okay so that one okay so that curly bracket so in that uh, outer one curly bracket uh, curly back uh, square bracket sorry so each and every other data is in between these outer curly brackets okay so that is called then two dimensional numpy array so uh, i have done that numpy thing previously so in the in the next sec session i can also upload the video related to this okay so uh, so you can see here the values thing what is the values okay next we can see what is that column thing okay print. okay so print the column index of the homeless so we can see, let's see what is that mean columns okay so column index means it is showing us all the uh, headers of that data so header means that what is the name of that particular column we have okay so so like in this uh, so, uh, so like in this data frame, uh, you can see we have, uh, if you remember in the last, uh, in the previous video, we have five uh, columns in, in our data frame. So it will show us the name of them. Okay. So the region, state, individual, family member and state population. So these are the five uh, columns. So by using the columns function, we can see what are the attributes or variables we have in the data frame. Okay. So let me also comment that and let's see what is in the third part. Okay, the third part is the index of the homeless. Okay, so what is that index? An index for the row, either a row number or a row name. Okay, okay, let me run it. I am also not very clear about this because I am also doing this for the first time. Okay, okay, index. Okay, so index basically the number of rows that we have. So uh, so in pandas always remember it starts with zero so it is zero to 50 that means 51 rows okay so that's how we can can check the what type of values and the name of the column and what are the indexes we have in that particular data frame that homeless data frame okay let me submit it and let's go further to the next step okay so now that first section we in have video, completed we'll the two so in so we have completed the first section now we are on the second section so let me play it for you and if you see you can comment me also if you find anything wrong in it so i am playing it okay in this video we'll cover the two simplest and possibly most important ways to find interesting parts of your data frame the first thing you can do is change the order of the rows by sorting them. 
so that the most interesting data is at the top of the data frame. You can sort rows using the sort values method, passing in a column name that you want to sort by. For example, when we apply sort values on the weight kilograms column of the dog's data frame, we get the lightest dog at the top, Stella the Chihuahua, and the heaviest dog at the bottom, Bernie the St. Bernard. Setting the ascending argument to false will sort the data the other way around, from heaviest dog to lightest dog. We can sort by multiple variables by passing a list of column names to sort values. Here we sort first by weight, then by height. Now Charlie, Lucy and Bella are ordered from shortest to tallest, even though they all weigh the same. To change the direction values are sorted in, pass a list to the ascending argument to specify which direction sorting should be done for each variable. Now Charlie, Lucy and Bella are ordered from tallest to shortest. We may want to zoom in on just one column. We can do this using the name of the data frame followed by square brackets with the column name inside. Here we can look at just the name column. To select multiple columns you need two pairs of square brackets. In this code the inner and outer square brackets are performing different tasks. The outer square brackets are responsible for subsetting the data frame and the inner square brackets are creating a list of column names to subset. This means that you could provide a separate list of column names as a variable and then use that list to perform the same subsetting. Usually it's easier to do in one line. There are lots of different ways to subset rows. The most common way to do this is by creating a logical condition to filter against. For example, Let's find all the dogs whose height is greater than 50 centimetres. Now we have a true or false value for every row. We can use the logical condition inside of square brackets to subset the rows we're interested in to get all of the dogs taller than 50 centimetres. We can also subset rows based on text data. Here we use the double equal sign in the logical condition to filter the dogs that are Labradors. We can also subset based on dates. Here we filter all the dogs born before 2015. Notice that the dates are in quotes and are written as year, then month, then day. This is the international standard date format. To subset the rows that meet multiple conditions, you can combine conditions using logical operators such as the AND operator seen here. This means that only rows that meet both of these conditions will be subsetted. You could also do this in one line of code, but you'll also need to add parentheses around each condition. If you want to filter on multiple values of a categorical variable, the easiest way is to use the isIn method. This takes in a list of values to filter for. Here, we check if the colour of a dog is black or brown and use this condition to subset the data. Now it's time to practice your sorting and subsetting. So cool guys, hope you will understand the things that we have seen in that video. It is showing us how we can sort the data and we can, <coughs> we can sort the data for, uh, by by using the sort function by doing ascending and descending order and how we can extract data from that particular row and column of the data so let me start with that first thing so first thing is sorting rules so finding interesting bits of data in the data frame is often easier if you change the order of the rows okay you can start by start the rows by passing and column name to the sort values okay okay so sort value is the function remember this guys okay so next in case where rows have the same values this is common if you sort and categorical variable okay okay you may wish to break the ties by sorting and another column you can sort the multiple column in the way by passing the list column name okay so sorting on 
syntax so one column go if we want to uh, uh, sort only one column then we can use sort dot sort values dot breed so breed you if you remember in that dog data frame it is showing us what is the breed breed is the type of the dog what kind of dog is so we can sort it by this as well or multiple columns we can also sort by using multiple columns so uh, like df dot sort value so using uh, round bracket in that round bracket we have to uh, use that square bracket okay and in the square bracket we have to put that column name that we have so in that case we have breed and weight or in kgs okay so uh, by combining sort values with the head you can answer question to the form of what are the top case where okay so homeless data is available and panda is loaded as pd okay so okay. so these are the things so it gives the instruction sort homeless by the num number of homeless individuals from the small to large and save this as a homeless dot ing okay and print the head of this sorted data frame okay so let's go to it and start doing the coding so so the first task is we need to sort homeless by number of homeless individuals okay so for that it is already done by me previously so you can see homeless dot ind is that new uh, uh, variable that we have created and what we are doing in it that we are just taking homeless data frame and we are sorting its values by individual so individual is that uh, is that uh, uh, name uh, one of the column in that data frame so if you want i can show you give me a second so we can check it like this okay so uh, here you can see we have individual here okay so individual means uh, individual in that column so what is it doing it is sort the indi uh, all the data frame by the basis of the individual so let's see what we get when we run this okay okay so here you can see now it is uh, f uh it is sorted by the smallest to largest okay if you remember previously we have the bigger value here it is 25700 but now we have four, uh, 43437 and one more thing if you guys notice that in the in that above one if you can see that is the indexes that zero that is zero one two and three so the the order of these are will be same because we are in uh, we are uh, we are sorting it by individual so that index that we have previously it is also rearranged you can see here as well okay so that thing is done let me okay okay run Sorry. so let me submit it okay now the second thing that we have sort the homeless by the number of homeless family members in that descending order and save it as homeless fam okay so now we have to do that same thing but in that case we have to uh, rearrange it on the basis of uh, 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 on the basis of their uh, ascending and descending order okay so if we are using that data frame so uh, homeless again so we have here homeless dot uh, region frame so we are saving our data in that new variable and the same thing homeless dot sort variable and we are putting the variable name from which we want to sort our data frame so we are sorting it by region and then family member but now we are giving them another instruction that i want to uh, uh, rearrange it in the ascending order but in that uh, but in that case i am giving them the values that boolean value true and false so what i am we are doing here is we are 
uh, change its order ascending order change its order in using ascending order so we put true here for that region one and false for the family member so it filled rearrange our data uh, data frame by region only not by the family member so let me run it and see what the output that we are getting okay so uh, let's go a little above okay okay here it is so if you remember we have region here when we see the head thing so it is like east south pacific central pacific mount and uh, east south west west south center so it is arranged like this but now we have rearranged it uh, in the ascending order so you can see it is uh, arranged by the ascending order like east east uh, so let me do one thing let me show you the whole data frame here just give me a second dot head and let's see first 20 rows for that okay so here we are so so here you can see so what i have done here, i just put the head and gave them 20 so that means it will show me the first 20 top rows of that particular new rearranged data frame that we have done so it is just for explaining you that how it is rearranged so you can see here uh, in the region so uh, so you can see uh, in that the region so it is rearranged by using ascending order here so you can see the east mount here and after that e completed then we can come with m so it, you can see it is uh, uh, rearranged in the alphabetical order here okay so that's how we can rearrange one of the particular uh, you know uh, column in, uh, by using that sort values function here okay so that's how we can rearrange this so let's go one step further now let me submit it okay now we are on the last part of the video oh on that uh, particular script okay then that exercise what we have to do sort homeless first by region okay so we have already done this okay that thing is done so we have to do okay hint sort call passing is the or in a list column name and setting the ascending union call head to get up the top few rows okay so let me do that again what okay so we have already done that thing okay so it is showing us the same thing let me submit the answer cool so as of now let's see what things we have completed so we have done the introduction thing we have see the inspection of the data frame how we can inspect the data frame so we have seen info method describe method okay and or uh, and some other methods as well and then we are here for the sorting and subsetting so we can see how we can sort and subset our data frame by using sort function and sorting goes okay now let's go further okay so so now we are subsetting of column so we are now on another video of subsetting of column so subsetting means we want that particular column from that data frame that comes to us okay so so here you can see we can start it now select the individual columns okay subsetting okay when working with the data you may not need all the variables in your data set okay square brackets can be used to select one of the column that matters to you in order to make the sense to you okay to select only column a of the data frame df is used okay so here you can see it is saying that uh, if we don't want to use all the columns from that particular data frame we don't uh, so we can use the square bracket and just put the name of the column in between them so by using this we can take data for that only particular column that we want okay 
so uh, so uh, in that particular subset you can see it is showing us the example how we can use this so you can see it is using the df df i think the data frame name and in the square bracket it is showing us that particular column so we can use it like this cool so mm, that is the same thing it is showing us if we, if, uh, in the second here it is showing us if we want to extract two columns for one column we can use single for two we can can uh, put comma in between these two okay so so uh, let's go further for the exercise okay so here it is showing create a data frame called individual and that contains only two individual columns of homeless print print the head of the result okay so so here we have individual is already created for us and okay that contains only the individual columns of okay so now we want only individual from that homeless data frame so what we can do is we can write homeless here homeless and in the square bracket we can put the name of that particular uh, column we have in the homeless data frame if you remember okay so let me run it and see okay sorry move, move this okay so the data is extracted in that individual uh, variable let me see what in that individual frame we have okay dot head okay let's see the result okay so here you can see we have only individuals data in that particular variable that we have extracted now okay so let me submit it and check if we are doing it correctly yeah we are doing it correctly you can see the green tickets comes here okay so the second part is here now so in the second part create what it is saying create a data frame called state fam that contains only the two that contains only the state and the family members okay column of homeless in that in that order okay okay the state fam we have to create the state fam here so for can do we can use homeless data frame again using square bracket and then we can put the name state the name of the data frame one and second name is family members okay so just give me a second okay so family member is also here and column on that order okay and print the head okay and then he, it is saying we have to print the head of that same so print state frame dot head and now we can see let me run the code okay it is showing me the error so error why it is showing me the error let's see hmm. Okay. Okay, so yeah, so you can so here is the error. So we have to use double square bracket if we want to 
make that data come out from it because one is for the data room and one is for the internal column now it will run yeah here you can see so we have saw the error here so the error is that if we want to extract the two data from one data frame we used to we have to use the double square bracket in between them so that's how we can extract that data from that particular data frame here so here you can see we can get the state data and the family member data from that particular data frame cool so let me try to submit it again and let's see yeah the answer is correct now we are on the third part of that particular exercise so here we have create a data frame called in state that contains the individual and state columns of home list in that order okay and print the head of the result okay so let's start again so we need to do the same thing home list square bracket square bracket and then we have to put the state that contains the okay first thing we need individuals here okay and the second we need state here okay so this is an individual here mm -hmm. okay and then he wants me to print okay now I am printing print ind state dot head okay let's see by running the code okay now you can see so here is the result so you can see we have individual and state both in our data frame so one more thing if uh, okay so that's it for this let me see so individual is here individual is here and state is here okay so we have that all thing so let me submit it again answer cool well done so as of now we have completed uh, the uh, how much we have completed so we are done with the subsetting columns okay so uh, in the in the next exercise we are uh, going up with the subsetting rows okay so stay with me i'm going next okay so in we so we are at the subsetting rows part so previously we have done the column part so how we can subsetting a column now we are in the subsetting of rows so <coughs> so here we have okay a larger part of the data science is about to finding which bits of your data set are okay intersecting okay one of the simplest technique for this is to find the subset of the row that matches some criteria so these is sometimes known as the filtering rows and selection rows there are many ways to subset a data frame perhaps that most common is the use of ra rational operation return true and false okay for each uh, for each row then pass the inside the square bracket Okay. so for subsetting a row what we need to do is we need to put the name of the data frame and the square bracket that we have done previously the same and uh, that and the data frame name again and then in the square bracket we have to put the name of the column and then how and by doing this we can add any condition with it like this if it is greater than 60 or equals to 10 so this is how we can uh, subsetting the rows okay and other thing you can filter the multiple condition at once by using the bitwiser and operator okay so if you want to uh, so if you want to filter the data from that particular data frame we can also do this by by using uh, that dog function here so by using that and sorry the and bit wider in between the two conditions okay it's so like dog's height is this and dog color is tan okay that's so that's how we can subset so so let for, so let me start with the exercise and uh, you can see so uh, so we can see how can we um, 
uh, start for the things for that uh, rows thing okay so filter for rows get individual filter then other okay so in that first exercise he want us to he wants us to filter homeless case okay where the numbers of individual is greater than 10000 assigning assigning okay uh, ind gt 10k view the print result okay so he was so in the first query he want us to filter out that individual who are greater than 10000 so, okay so for that what we need to do is so we have to put homeless here square bracket homeless again as you can see here you can use the same thing okay homeless once again and then another square bracket and in between them we have to put that name of the individual okay so individuals so we put individual here and then we put the statement of greater than 10k so 10k means 100,000 10,000 okay then he want us to print that data so here it is so i'm running the code cool so here you can see uh, what we are getting from that data is we are getting only the rows who are which are greater than 10,000 individuals in that particular homeless data okay so in that case you can see we have only one two three four five six six regions from where we have individual more than 10,000 okay so here you can see pacific south atlantic mid atlantic pacific west south central and pacific so these are the country regions okay and these are the states california florida new york or region taxes and washington so here we have the only uh, individual have more than 10,000 so we have extracted that data from that okay so let me go one step further let me submit it and see okay okay cool cool then let's go further more in the second problem we have okay so what it is saying filter homeless for case where the u.s census region is mountains assigning the mountain or oh, region and view print result filter homeless for a case where the u.s census region is mountain okay okay mountain region okay so they want us to extract the region of mountain uh, region mountain okay okay so he want us to just extract that mountains from that data okay so what we have to do for the rows you have to put homeless data frame name another way again homeless and then region so we want to extract it from region so we have to put region in that region little region and is equals to mountains okay so they only want that mountain data from that so we can put mountain here and let me print it the print the result and let's see if we are getting the same result that they were asking or not okay so we have to use double is equal to there sorry for that mistake cool so we are getting error Okay, so why we are getting this error? Okay, let me see.
okay so that's why we are getting error because we are taking region we have to take region in the square bracket mm -hmm. okay let's see region is not defined okay so we have to put here Inverted commas here. Now let's see. Okay, so we are getting error. Okay, so that let me check. stuck here okay let me see I think all this okay. yeah so here we have the output so we have uh, separated the regions and that particular um, mountain data from it so you can see we can use homeless and then square bracket and homeless then in square bracket we mentioned that particular column name and then what we want from that we want only mountain data so we put that mountain data and we can see the result here so we have getting all the mountain regions result here so let me submit it cool so we are done with the two things now the third one So now we have on the third problem of that particular exercise now. So what we can see here is filter homeless for case where number of family member is less than 1000 and the region is specific. Assign to the fame LT1K pack view the print result. Okay, so filter the homeless for the case where the number of families is less than 1000 and the region is specific okay so it is simple okay so as we have done previously we can do that thing okay so he wants to do we have to go again homeless then we have to put homeless again okay so now he want us the two things in the one going so for that we have to use here the uh, round bracket okay and then we can use the problem statement that we have he want us to use family members okay family members which are greater sorry less than 1000 okay that is the first thing Okay, it is done and the second is we want us to make it for the region thing and it is basic. So homeless homeless square bracket column region regions is equal to pacific okay pacific and let's see 
let's see cool so you can see we are extra we have extracted that data so in that particular uh, data frame what we have done is we have uh, put two uh, two filters together so first we are taking that family members those are less than 1000 and 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 these their region will be pacific so when we run that query we got that answer pacific region state is alaska individual on 43 family member less than 1000 as we have mentioned above it is 582 and it is uh, in the region specific so that is done also let me submit it and see cool so here we go we have completed the another course outline here so let me go further more so what is this superb subsetting using square bracket plus logical condition is often the most powerful way to identify the interesting rows of the data oh yeah exactly so so that's how we can X filter out the data by using logical operators in that particular data frame column. So you can also use it. So just remember one thing before using it, you have to use that data frame name first, then a square bracket. Okay. So when you are using a single, remember that when you are using the single uh, data, you want the single frame of data frame. So we, you can only use that particular data frame name and put that uh, square bracket and get the data from it. But if you want to use that uh, filter thing to set to use the condition in between them, so you have to use that uh, round bracket in between them. Okay, and 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 I'm telling you one more again that uh, let's go one step back and for the for the uh, rows thing so if you want to extract rows okay so in rows you just need to use uh, the uh, round bracket and that uh, square in between square bracket put that name of that rows in between them okay cool so let go further we have already submitted submitted Okay, so we are done with this. Let's continue one step further. Move cool. So I hope you guys are enjoying it as of now. So we are very close by ending that particular topic for that first. So now we are on the subsetting rows by categorical variable okay so before moving forward i want to show you guys what are the categorical variables looks like okay so categorical variables are something in which we have some kind of category suppose we have cars so we have a type of car suv okay a uh, small car large car or we can say company of the car like bmw uh, mercedes benz okay so that is the categorical data so uh, let me see some good example you can see yeah here you can see so that is a type of categorical variables okay so here you can find categorical data looks like how this looks like okay so now let's go back to so uh, let me go back okay so let me go back uh, to the audit again like project here uh, so now we are on categorical variables let's start so first read what we see subsetting data based on a categorical variable often the individually involved using the or operator okay to select rows from multiple categories this can get delicious uh, you to want all state in one of the one of the three different region okay for example instead using the is in method which will allow you to tackle this problem by writing one condition 
instead of three separate ones okay okay let me write away subtending data based on categorical variable okay often involves using the or operator to select the rows from multiple categories okay this can be tedious okay so it is saying that uh, if we want to uh, separate data of the categorical variable so we have to use that or operator okay so it is saying this can be tedious so it is very difficult to get the data from that okay from different regions okay so it is showing us that method that we can uh, use it and separate data very easily that is is in method okay which is allow us to tackle the problem by adding the one condition instead of separate ones okay so by using that we have to, we can uh, get our data only by using just one statement okay now let's see okay so this is the example colors color is equals to brown black and tan okay so the condition is equals to dog color is in color okay and dog is condition okay so what it is doing here is he has one column called colors in which it is defining the color okay so and he has that data frame which is dog that we have uh, see previously so what he doing is he take the data frame dog and he put that color column in it and he is checking is in colors and dog conditions so and he is printing that so homeless available in the corner of the world please okay so let me start uh, by doing that one example then we can see easily what actually we have to do in that case okay so filter homeless for case where usa census region is south atlantic or it is mid atlantic assigned to south mid atlantic view the print result okay so so we have created a new variable south south mid atlantic so okay so what you want us to do homeless take the homeless data here usa census region is south atlantic or it is Middle Atlantic. Okay. Okay. I have to think how we can do this. Almost oh, okay. The U.S. Census region is South Atlantic. So first thing is clear that we have to use the region. Where region name is South Atlantic, or it is Middle Atlantic. Assign to okay. So let's take a hint, guys. I don't have much time. Okay, so you should take the sign. Okay, to show you data frame, show data frame. All you need is this. Value one. Or the value two. Okay. Okay. Let me write a code and we can can see what we have. So it is saying homeless data frame data frame data frame same thing column name will be region okay column name region and you want me to put South Pacific. Just give me a second. Complete. South Pacific in it. South Pacific in it. Okay. And then this. Use the all. Then say. DF. DF. And the second one, origin only. So origin, origin, origin. Again, and uh, equals to three. Mid. 
making copies mid atlantic so mid atlantic here let me see what out okay the episode where is it okay is on this sorry guys what that and trying to take the hint from the okay let me net okay df another df where i put that df again that is on the sorry guys on this on this region okay okay on this on this region region और ठीक है ओके काम दैट इज बिकॉज ऑफ दिस इन वैलिड सिंह टेक्स रीजन एंड दैट रीजन इज इक्वल टू रीजन इज इक्वल टू साउथ अटलांटिक ओके सो वी पुट साउथ अटलांटिक इन बिटवीन देम दैट इज डन सो फर्स्ट कंडीशन इज डन एंड सेकंड इज सेइंग यूजिंग द ऑर एंड देन पुट रीजन एंड दिड एटलांटिक ओके सो दैट्स हाउ वी आर यूजिंग दैट ऑल सो वी से सबसेटिंग द डेटा बेस्ड ऑन द कैटेगोरिकल वेरियबल ऑफ टेन इन्वॉल्व यूजिंग द ऑर ऑपरेटर सो दैट इज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द ऑर ऑपरेटर सो दैट्स हाउ वी कैन यूजिंग ऑर एंड वी कैन टेक द डेटा बाई इजिंग ऑर बट नाउ इट इज सेंग वी कैन यूज वन क्वेरी ऑन दिंग इट इज यूजिंग is in method so let's see let me submit it and we can go to the next step and see how we can use the in is so filter homeless from the usa census state is that list of more state okay cnu can you assign to more homeless view okay so here what we have it is provide us the census the country here or oh, states okay so and now we want us to separate it so we have so what we can do is so i think it is like we can use homeless square bracket we can use can you dot is in is in c 
ठीक है सो आई थिंक इट विल बी लाइक दैट If we want, so at four and five, seven and eight. Let me see seven. Seven and eight. Four and four. Eight. Four and four. Eight. Seven. Okay. So, so that's how we can use is in table to check whether that particular state is in that particular data frame or not. We can use is in here. Let me submit it. See. Did you correctly define the part of the data frame? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. मुझे वो मुझे स्पिरिट मुझे वो मुझे I don't know what is the other yeah I have to use the same name. the values yeah so that's the thing if we don't use that outer data frame name so we get only the boolean values from def and if we use that outer data frame name so we can get the values so what so that is the correct thing okay so remember the same guys we have to use that outer outer thing is well, how to take a name is well whenever That if you want that data from that data frame, so let me submit it. Cool. So we are going good as of now. So we are on the next. In the last lesson. In the la in the last lesson of that particular course outline, we have a new column. So how we can add a new column in the data frame? So let me start it again. Okay. So let's start again. So let's play the video and see what is in that. In the last lesson, you saw how to subset and sort a data frame to extract interesting bits. However, often when you first receive a data frame, The contents aren't exactly what you want. You may have to add new columns derived from existing columns. Creating and adding new columns can go by many names, including mutating a data frame, transforming a data frame, and feature engineering. Let's say we want to add a new column to our data frame that has each dog's height in meters instead of centimeters. On the left-hand side of the equals. We use square brackets with the name of the new column we want to create. 
On the right hand side, we have the calculator to receive a data frame. The contents aren't exactly what you want. You may have to add new columns derived from existing columns. Creating and adding new columns can go by many names, including mutating a data frame, transforming a data frame, and feature engineering. Let's say we want to add a new column to our data frame that has each dog's height in meters instead of centimeters. On the left hand side of the equals, we use square brackets with the name of the new column we want to create. On the right hand side, we have the calculation. Notice that both the existing column and the new column we just created are in the data frame. Let's see what the results are if we calculate the body mass index, or BMI, of these dogs. BMI is usually calculated by taking a person's weight in kilograms and dividing it by their height in meters squared. Instead of doing this with people, we'll try it out with dogs. Again, the new column is on the left-hand side of the equals, but this time our calculation involves two columns. The real power of pandas comes in when you combine all the skills you've learned so far. Let's figure out the names of skinny, tall dogs. First, to define the skinny dogs, we take the subset of dogs who have a BMI of under 100. Next, we sort the result in descending order of height to get the tallest skinny dogs at the top. Finally, we keep only the columns we're interested in. Here you can see that Max is the tallest dog with a BMI of under 100. Time to practice your pandas powers. So, cool guys, hope you guys understand what is in that video. So, in that video, he is saying that we have to use all of uh, the, all the things that we have learned as of now in that particular course of data transform data that are the infos uh, the info thing the sorting thing the extraction thing subsetting of the rows and subsetting of the column subsetting by categorical variable i think we all know how we can do this so now we have to use all these things and come back it into the one okay so first let's start with the adding a new data frame a new column to a data frame thing first so let's start so you are stuck with just the data you are given instead you can add a new column to the data frame this has many names such as transforming mutating and feature engineering okay so so the adding of data frame uh, so sorry so adding a column to a data frame it is has three names or you can say multiple names which is transforming data mutating and featuring engineering okay so you so now we can create a new column from the scratch but also column to define them from the column for example by adding a column together by changing their units okay so homeless are label and panda is loaded as well as all the okay now uh, let's start at a total column as some of individual and family members okay so Add a new column to homeless name. Okay, and name total containing the sum of individual and family members. Good. So let's do. Okay. Add a new column to homeless. Okay, name total. So homeless can be. So in homeless we have to create a new column that is homeless is and his name is total Okay so in the first value it is in add total column as sum of individual and family members okay so add total column 
Okay, so we have to create a new Okay, so it is like this homeless total is equal to homeless okay it's the same as again then we like some homeless of individuals comma homeless I don't know I'm doing it right or wrong right now I'm just trying to uh, to see what I am getting is I am doing right or wrong I don't know seriously so let me see okay Okay, it is about homeless. Same thing, same thing. I'm using sun instead of plus. Okay, and then get a portion of homeless world in the world and use a whole lot of the proportion of homeless who are being sure to have it. That's the answer. It's a little confusing. Okay, so we have to take the total thing exactly the same. Right there, and then. And then. So we need to divide it here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Now I understand. So that's how they are. Ready. So this one. Okay. So in total, we got all the total values of that uh, sum and this. And then we divide it like this. The individual. Okay. So it is making two columns here. So let me also do that same. But the thing that I understand like this. Okay. Oh, okay. Why it is showing it in valid syntax? Let's do it again. Let's 
I don't know why I think showing my code having invalid syntax but now we are seeing the solution okay so in that case how we can uh, see you can use the homeless total homeless individual here and we can add them like this okay so first we create an equivalent total and we add the individual and family members on that and after that we use the homeless if we individual create another new column and we divide it by the individual and total so that's how we get the two new column and we add on it okay so let's go one step further now cool so that's how we can add a new column into the data frame okay as of now we are going good okay now combo attack so that is the final thing so in that particular uh, exercise we have we are now doing all the things that we have done previously in that particular uh, course outline if you remember in the data transform thing okay so let me start it okay first create a okay create a new column this homeless individual as per tk okay okay let me we have seen that four most common types of data manipulation sorting uh row substring column subsetting of rows and adding new columns in a real life data analysis you can mix and match these four manipulation to answer the uh, materials questions in this exercise you answer the question what state has the highest number of homeless individuals as per 10000 people in the state combine your uh, new panda scales to find out okay so in the first study so what are the instructions we have add a column homeless okay and individual per thousand contains the number homeless individual per ten thousand people in each state okay okay let me do it mm. Okay, so homeless individual per thousand is equal to thousand into Okay, let's see the hint. Oh, we have to be a little confusing. Okay, it is showing add a column to it like this. And column A and column B. Okay, so I think we have to make it like this homelessness, comma individuals and divided them by the minus that are state pops I think let me first meet them all and then we can check okay now subset rows for new greater than 20 okay so we have got a new column uh, this and we can use it here and we can make it like 
Cool. So here we have our answer finally. Oof, I think it's pretty much long video right now. It's boring. So let me submit it. Cool, cool. Combining Washington D.C. has the highest number of homeless individuals, almost 54%, 54,000 people. This is sorry. Yeah. 
okay this is almost double the number of next high state of i if you want to combine the you know, additional from some cool guys so uh, uh now we are done with the today's lecture with exercise then i think we are doing great so we have done that so let's so we have done the first thing here and then the next video we will go to the aggregate data things okay so let me end this video here because it is going pretty much longer which i don't accept expected then from that so let us see in the next video so thank you guys for watching